Hello, welcome back to Call Clutter Fairy, where I help you get clutter free so that you can live stress free. Paperwork truly seems to be one of the biggest struggles that people have. And I think it's because of the anticipation and the unfortunate connection with what do I do with this when you get a piece of paper. So today we're going to go step by step on how to break down your paperwork so that you can set up a system and never have to wonder what to do with that piece of paper again. Step one, get your supplies ready. Now some of the supplies that I like to use are making sure that I have a post-it note, a pen, and a sharpie so that as I'm coming across things, I can immediately write a note on it and make sure that you have a box for those things that need to be shredded or destroyed. Once you have your supplies at hand, it's time to go to step two, and that is collect all of the paperwork that is around your house. Now, if paperwork is something you've been trying to get a handle on for a couple of years, you might need to go room by room for this. Get all of that paperwork together in one place. If that means getting a couple of plastic bins or large boxes, then let's do that. So get those boxes ready and collect every piece of stray paper that you can find and put it in those boxes. That way, as you're setting up your timer to do sessions, you know all of the paperwork is one place and you'll just take it chunk by chunk. It's not a scenario where you finish and you think, yay, and you go into the next room and oh, there's more paperwork. You wanna know conclusively what you have so that once you're done, you're done. The other thing that will help by getting all of your paperwork together in one place is your other areas won't have that sense of, oh gosh, there's papers over there that I need to deal with. They're all together. Set your timer. Going into this knowing that you have a designated amount of time that you have to spend on this is really going to be the thing that helps you stay motivated because looking at that big pile of paperwork is automatically defeating and it's going to be filled with dread of what's in this paperwork. I hate doing paperwork. I don't want to do this. But knowing that you only have to do it for 15 minutes is going to be the thing that helps you because when that 15 minutes is over, you're done for the day. Now, if you found that, holy cow, I actually got through almost half that box in 15 minutes, this wasn't as scary as I thought, absolutely reset the timer and go for another 15 minutes. But if it was difficult, if it was hard for you, that's great. The next day, you know, again, it's only 15 minutes that you have to go through and eventually you will run out of paperwork. Categories is one of the hardest topics to really break down because each person will think of things differently. But I'm always saying likes with likes. I want you to think in terms of when you go shopping at a grocery store. Breaking down your categories for paperwork is very similar in this in that there's going to be one generic aisle. Uh, and within that aisle, things are broken down by fruit and vegetable and canned meat. So let's go down the line of thinking of the canned food aisle. You're going to have all of the vegetables together. So now that you're looking at the vegetables, you've got corn all in one section and there's going to be different styles of corn. There's going to be white corn, yellow corn, creamed corn. There's going to be those without salt. So our categories for your paperwork is going to be the same thing. So the very first thing we want to create is the main large categories. And once those are all together, all completely together, we're going to start breaking them down into smaller things. Now, naming categories is really unique because it has to fit the way your memory works and the way your family works. Now, if, if this is still just the concept of breaking it down is overwhelming, there is a fabulous product called Freedom Filer, and it comes with the categories all set up. And I mean, just about every category you could think of. And it helps you break down not just that big high level, but it also helps break down the subcategories. It's color coded, 
It's an amazing system and it's about $30. I have that linked in my Amazon store below. So if this is still just a little bit more challenging or confusing for you, I recommend going ahead and buying a system like that if you can afford it because it will really guide you step by step and help you to set up your files in a way that will never get disorganized again. As you begin this sorting process, it's very hard to look at paperwork and not get distracted with what needs to be done with it. Oftentimes that's the dread with the paperwork is it's a difficult phone call that you need to make or it's something you need to write or it requires another step before you can get this done. That's where we get hung up on paperwork. So I want you to look at things with a high level of not what do I need to do with it, but what is it? For this initial sorting process, you are literally just looking at the superficial of what is it? This is a medical piece of paper. It goes in medical. This is my car registration. It goes with auto one by one. Not what do I need to do with it? What is it? This is a bill that needs to be paid. It goes into bills. Oh, I got to go to this play and it was so much fun. It goes into memories. So step three is the part where this really starts to come together and that's where we're sorting likes with likes. Now I have some categories set up. I'm going to go ahead and run those on the next screen. But some of those categories include utilities, credit cards, banking, medical, taxes, receipts, things to do, things to read, personal items, important documents such as birth certificates, social security, marriage and death certificates, coupons and shopping, automotive, memory items, manuals and warranties, and pets. Now this is just a generic list. Of course you're going to have things that I didn't mention that are important to you, but these are the most common categories that I've come across as I set up files for people. Here's what I recommend with bills. You don't need to keep these indefinitely. So as you've got credit cards that come in, you'll want to keep a few months worth just to make sure that your statements and payments matched up, that if you were waiting for a credit return for something that it posted, um, that you're not getting any weird charges. But beyond that, if you are not keeping those for your taxes, you do not need to keep those indefinitely. Same with utilities. You only need to keep a few months worth just to make sure that the charges are correct, that your payments have been applied, and beyond that, if you do not need them for your taxes, you can let those go. On my website at callclutterfairy.com, I have a whole list of how long to keep documents and which ones you need to keep forever. So make sure you check out that download. I'll have a link below in the description area as well. Something else I wanted to talk about really quick is you're going to come across papers that you don't need anymore. Now, you can absolutely keep them in a shredding pile if you have a shredder or if you have access to taking them somewhere. But here's a couple of other quick things that you can do. Um, I used a Sharpie on this really quick, just so you know my information is safe on here. You can still see through Sharpies though. So that is not the most um, secure way of blocking out your information. But they do sell these ink runners that completely obliterate your account number and your personal information. And that way you don't have accumulating files and piles of paper that need to be shredded. So I'll have that in the uh, store below on my Amazon section. And again, as a reminder, I get a couple of pennies every time you do go through the Amazon store and it doesn't add to the cost at all to you, but it helps support me and be able to put out these YouTube videos. So if you wouldn't mind clicking that Amazon store link below and any products that you buy do help me out with, again, no cost to you. The other thing you can do though, if you've got papers that have you know, oftentimes we get eight, nine pages. You don't need to shred the entire paper. Get your section that has your specific information. Rip off your address. Rip off your account number. This is meaningless to a person who's going through and trying to steal your information. And this tiny little bit is what you can keep up and shred or something else that I do. I'll even throw this in the kindling when I have an outside fire pit. So a couple of different options for you. If you are using a fire pit, please make sure that it's allowed in your living zone. Oftentimes there are fire restrictions. 
At the end of your 15 minutes, if you're able to leave them out where they are, that's fantastic. But if you can't, if you need that surface, get those stacks of papers. Use a rubber band, use a paper clip, or use a binder clip so that you're not having to resort every time. Put them together again and have them separated from the unsorted things so that the next day all you have to do is lay out your pre-sorted categories. You can get the next section of papers to go through. And so start. I hope you'll see that this isn't such a bad thing. Keep setting that timer and breaking it down day by day. If you have any questions about specific papers or what to do with them, please leave it in the comments below. But um, paperwork isn't that scary once you get the correct file system set up. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to click like. And if you haven't already, remember to click that subscribe and notification button. I will see you guys soon. Bye.